Hey, everyone. As discussed in our daily financial news, we are bringing Greg Dickerson on to our Monday session. How are you doing, Greg? Doing great, Michael. How are you? Oh, I'm, uh, today's a good day. Uh, today's a day that you and I've actually talked about probably for the next last six or seven months that this day would get here, right? We would have yep. a treatment of some kind that kind of took death off the table. Uh, I would argue the news today is exceeds my expectations, right? With a 90% uh, plus effectiveness, which was more than we could have hoped for. Uh, so I think it's even better. Uh, but when you when you heard the news, what was your first thought? Well, so it's a vaccine, not a treatment. So, yeah. you know, I was surprised to hear that they're touting a 90% efficacy, efficacy yeah. uh, of the vaccine. Um, you know, we still don't have a treatment. What we're hearing is the opposite on treatments, that some of that stuff's not quite there yet. But the vaccine's big news. But, you know, the big thing about it is, again, it's going to take time. How did you just fell down? Nah. It's going to take some time. Yeah, I'm mobile right now. That's okay. Um, yep. It's going to take some time, um, you know, to get the vaccine out to everybody. A lot of people, I mean, I think the reports right now, you know, not. I think it was like 60, 70% of the people don't trust, trust the polls anymore, but the yep. polls say that, <laughs> you know, 60% of the people aren't going to take the vaccine. I think you can trust that poll. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of people that don't want the vaccine that aren't going to want to get the vaccine. And even that being said right now, they have about 50 million doses that they say that, that they could release. And again, it's not going to be until next year. And it's going to take time to get that 50 million doses. It's a two uh, treatment mm -hmm. dose. So that's only 25, 25 million people that can actually get it. So that's even a fraction of the amount of essential healthcare um, workers to even get the vaccine. So yeah. everybody's getting ahead of themselves. Wall Street's on a big speculative high right now. It's just a big, you know, it's fake. It's not real. It's a speculative um, frenzy on this news. And then what happens is tomorrow there'll be a big sell-off because yeah. all the news is going to settle in. That's going to take all this time to get it out there. Most of the people are, you know, I mean, it's only a fraction of the population that's going to even be able to take advantage of it. And it'll be middle to the end of next year before, you know, and more likely end of next year into the following year before you have mass scale where pretty much most of the people in the country that wants the vaccine can take the vaccine. The real interesting question is, let's say we have a Biden administration, is there going to be a national vaccine mandate? That's going to be the question. We know a mask mandate's coming. Yeah. We know shutdowns are coming with Biden in office. The question is, can they mandate a vaccine at large uh, and at scale? Make you take that vaccine? That'll be an interesting thing. Yeah. So a couple of things that when I heard it first, first and foremost, I could finally envision a date, right? Uh, we've been staring into this abyss, this black hole. We were in a tunnel and there was no light. You and I both knew there was going to eventually be a light. So now I can see the mm -hmm. light. We can argue about how far away it is. I don't care. Um, but we see a light. And, and frankly, that's great news. So the second thing I started thinking about, yeah, the stock market and do you rotate out of big tech? And then there's the airlines and cruise lines that are now on death. You know, they were on deathbed. AMC theaters, right, was days away from going bankrupt. And now they can get a loan probably. I mean, there's all of that stuff. But that's not where I play. I'm a real estate investor. Mm -hmm. So the first couple of things I asked about is, okay, what changed be literally between yesterday and today? I think there's new questions. One, does this, the, mer, does the, I don't know what you want to call it, migration from urban vertical cities to the suburbs continue, slow down, reverse? Real questions. I don't know. I mean, I have to think about that. And, and it's way too early to tell, but I think that's a reasonable question, Right. Yeah. If you live in New York City and, you know, you can see Broadway being open in June. I'm just picking June as a month. I mean, yeah. If you want to pick August, I don't care. But, yeah, you know, if this if you see the city coming back in the summer. Do you stay right? You haven't moved yet. This is key. You haven't moved yet. Do you stay right? Do you cancel the movers? I don't know um, if you if you're in, if you moved into the suburbs and you bought a house and you're, you're transitioning. Do you plan to keep your kids in school more than just this year? Do you move back? I think there's so many interesting questions. And this migration is a big one. I've got to figure out uh, because we've already, I mean, just yesterday I talked about 30% rent drops in multiple cities. I'm like, huh, could be interesting. Another mm -hmm. one, 
what happens with millennials, right? I've, I've been a big believer of millennials are fundamentally changing and becoming owners versus renters. But does that pause? Does, does that slow down? You know, there's, there's so many different questions I have to ask today. Because again, I'm putting hundreds of thousands of dollars to work. Uh, and it's going to take time to figure it out. But these are new questions. I did not have these yeah. at 4 a.m. when I woke up. But I have them now. And I'm like, man, some, some big news coming. Well, you know, again, nothing changed between yesterday and today because there is no vaccine out there yet. Nobody's taken it yet. So nothing has changed on that front. Well, what no, hold on. Changing... One, one, one sec. I think something did change. We got a light. We can argue about the date, but we have a light. Yesterday, you and I would have talked, we're still in a dark tunnel, nothing coming. I think that is a change. I mean, I mean disagree with me if you do, but I think, I think that is a change. Yeah. So what you have is the potential for okay. a light. Fair enough. Nothing has been released yet. There's uh, no vaccine that's been shipped and nobody's enough. taking it that's not in a trial. Okay. There's no light yet. What you have is just like we had before, you know, positive news on something, but then, you know, until it's, so I'll put it in these terms that you'll understand. A deal ain't a deal till the check clears the bank. <laughs> Fair enough. Just because right? it's in escrow, don't mean it's done. No, you're right. Exactly. Fair this enough. deal hasn't closed yet. And more importantly, the check has not cleared the bank. And, you know, funds are getting hijacked all the time in yeah. escrow. So yeah, you're right. <laughs> a deal you're right. is not a deal till those funds have cleared the bank and it's and it's in your account. Fair so enough. So until, I would say we're in contract and, and maybe we've got through right. inspections, <laughs> but the deal's not exactly, done. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So from okay. the mindset, what we're talking about is what you asked specifically. How does that affect the psyche of an individual in New York City that had plans to move because everything is shut down, everything is locked down, and you know the virus is at large and it's on a tear right now. It's growing and growing and arguably, you know, once you open up in New York, it should come right back. And let's just talk about New York, right? That's just a big area. They had they were the hardest hit, right? So the people that have left New York, the millennials I've talked to have said, look, we live in New York and we pay a premium to live in New York because of all the amenities, the entertainment, the environment, the excitement. That's gone. Yeah. That's gone because of COVID. There was some civil unrest where people couldn't even go out to eat without being harassed. That's that. kind that's kind of gone. Okay. So the civil unrest is over. That was a temporary thing. Um, you know, uh, we shouldn't see a whole lot of that, but you know, if somebody, if the wrong person gets, you know, unfortunately shot or whatever, you know, mistreated during whatever, you know, you could see that happen again. So that's still a big issue that people are afraid of being in cities because of, you know, protests and marches okay. when something bad happens to somebody, you know, in that environment. So that's still a big issue on people's minds. They want to feel safe. Mm -hmm. They want their kids to be able to feel safe. So law enforcement, defund the police, all that is still a big issue. That's still out there. We don't know where a new administration is going to stand on that and how they're going to actually handle all that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, COVID is a whole nother, you know, side of the equation. So what changed yesterday between today, nothing open movies haven't opened back up. Restaurants yeah. aren't back at full capacity. So nothing has changed. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Nobody yeah. totally. that was closed yesterday because of COVID opened today because there's news of a vaccine. It ain't happening. Yeah. And we are going to continue to see more contraction, more shutdowns, and more issues, even with this on the forefront, mm -hmm. because again, the only people that are going to get it right away are going to be, you know, healthcare workers, yeah. government officials, essential personnel, law enforcement, police, fire, rescue. So the general public where you can reopen the economy at scale is not going to feel the effects till well into the end of the year, into next year, assuming this is, you know, on track. Now they're saying we've got this vaccine that's 90% effective. Um, they haven't said when they're going to release it they haven't mm -hmm. said it's ready for shipping on this day so those are the things I, I look at in terms of what you're talking about now the question is once that is out there and it is available is that going to affect and change somebody's mindset and i think there's more decisions number one safety number two taxation mm -hmm. number three what you can get for your money number four interest rates millennials are buying right now because it just makes sense why mm -hmm. rent for 1500 to 2000 or 3000 a month yeah. that can buy you a lot of house right now at 2.75 percent you sure know can. interest so those are some of the things that are driving that millennial conversation and the other side of the equation is all of the businesses ha that have learned how to work remotely now have a workforce that's global um, are they going to go back to requiring people to live in san francisco and palo alto to work for their tech company no chance i think i think that permanent work at home thing 
or that work at home thing is a permanent trend that's going to affect uh, populations in cities. So New York's going to survive. San Francisco is going to survive. Seattle's going to survive. You know, all the big cities that have had issues, Chicago and, and, and have had some attrition, they're going to survive. You're not going to shut down a big city. The question is, how quickly will they come back? How quickly will, will they return? And what is the um, you know, migration going to look like in these other areas? And one of the ways you can stay on top of it is follow U-Haul yeah. uh, you know, moving data. So you can kind of follow it real time and see sure you know, what's going on there. Is it still on the upswing? Have they contracted? Where are people moving to? So it's going to be a really fascinating thing to watch. But I don't think anything is going to change in the next rest of this year. I don't think until we get into next year and they actually start shipping the vaccine, uh, I think that's what it's going to take for people's mindset to fundamentally change on whether or not I'm going to move. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question, because one thing did change. Again, I, you know, I'm always interested in, in trying to catch the inflection points because that's where real money is made. Like, for example, one of the deals I would not touch yesterday that I just need to think about today I, and I don't have an answer is I would not buy a house today unless it was significantly discounted that had a tenant in it. Right. If the tenant was in it, they were not paying. Right. They're, you know, the COVID this, COVID that. Uh, I, I would not want to buy that to inherit the problem. Okay. Now I have to go, huh? Let's assume this comes out. This, you know, basically, I wouldn't buy it before because I didn't want the risk. I did. I had a timing risk. It, when can I evict them? Is it January? Is it March? Is it June? Right. How far can these be extended? Because again, remember, I'm in California, and yeah. We've had people not paying since March and who knows when that will end. Now the vaccine, at least the hope of a vaccine, I could see an end date, right? They won't do evictions forever, right? We'll eventually be able to do that. Um, so I don't know the answer to that. I mean, you know, do I think the CDC eviction could get extended from December 31st? Sure. But does it go past March, past April? Uh, I, you know, I, I have a hard time thinking it gets much past that because I do think the economy comes back. So these are just things I'm thinking yeah. about now. Yeah, that I don't know. And again, you know, it's not even out there yet. So, so that's not even on the table. Uh, I think, I think, and a lot of it depends on the administration. Has the administration changed? You know, if Biden's in there, you know, what does the Senate look like? So there's a lot of questions. So if you get a blue wave and somehow, you know, the Republicans do not hold the Senate, then it's going to be carte blanche, you know, um, with, with, you know, the Biden administration and a democratic Congress and a democratic Senate, mm -hmm. um, where they could potentially pass, you know, indefinite eviction moratoriums and indefinite rent controls and, you know, things like that. So those are the types of things you got to still be thinking about. There's a new administration potentially coming in, um, you know, and what are those things going to look like? And again, it's going to take a while to get this thing under control. Mm -hmm. They're, they, they're talking about big stimulus, big extensions, all that. So the assumption should be, they're going to extend that moratorium indefinitely until the population gets vaccinated and coronavirus is wiped out. Let me tell you, if you had a vaccine for every single person in this country today, you're still not going to wipe uh, coronavirus off the map for a couple of years. Mm. It ain't going to happen. Even if everybody could get vaccinated today, every single person in this country, you know, it still is going to take time. And then we don't even know, well, is that permanently effective? Because right. here's the thing, the flu vaccine is not a permanent, you know, cure yep. or, you know, deterrent of anybody getting the flu and dying from it. So we just don't know what we don't know. So, but, you know, and that's what I look at from, from that point. No, that's not going to stop me from doing a deal. It's not going to stop me from doing business. What it is going to stop me from doing is being more um, liberal in my criteria than I am now. I'm going to still continue to be just as conservative in my underwriting today based on COVID as I was yesterday with or without a vaccine. And I will continue that even as the vaccine gets produced, released and put out there at scale. I'm going to continue my conservative assumptions based on uh, the understanding I have today of the effects of COVID and what that can do um, until we know exactly what are those extensions on moratoriums gonna look like? What are rent controls gonna look like? What is your tax environment really gonna look like? Because yeah. again, if you get Biden in office, there's gonna be conversations about tax loopholes First thing they want to do is they want to eliminate all these things that Trump put into place. And oh, the yeah. Tax and Jobs Act was one of them, which gives you a lot of real estate, you know, tax um, incentives that, that we've been able to take advantage of and self-employment tax incentives. Uh, that could go away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then the last thing I was thinking about, again, before we get on to topic number two is 
Do I look at any new part of the real estate cycle different today? And again, it, it's very simple to me yesterday and today. Yeah. And you and I have talked before, you know, like the, like the small retail strip center, you know, six, five, six, seven stores, you know, in an mm -hmm. L with, you know, 40 parking spots or whatever it is, you know, those were, those were probably one of the most stressed assets, at least in my market. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Do I look at those differently today? I, I think I do. Right. Because I, again, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I go, you know what? You get this asset cheap enough. It always has to be cheap enough. And, you know, maybe it's half full. Could I hold that a year and then start to fill it up with, with new tenants? Uh, you know, I might look at that kind of deep discount differently because again, I see a light. I think it's less than a year. Maybe I, maybe I do that deal today that maybe I don't do yesterday. I, I don't know. Does that make so, sense? So, yeah. So that's a different conversation. So if you have the ability to hold and you can carry something, then yeah, it's a great time to be buying because there's still a lot of distressed assets and buying a house with that you know, tenant in, in place that's in default on their lease. If you can weather that storm for a potential future, you know, change in the environment, then yeah, that that's nothing wrong with that at all. And that's the kind of stuff I'm out looking at today. I'm looking at some distressed assets and, nice. you know, things like that. Not because of any news or anything. This is what I do. Yeah, I'm yeah. just out today and I just happen to be out looking. So my business model hasn't changed because nothing is in front of us today that's concrete. Yeah. There's still a lot of uncertainty and all that. So I'm still looking at things the way I've been looking at them the last six months Okay. until we get a firm administration. We, we have a firm grip on what policy is going to look like. We know exactly what this vaccine and what the COVID situation is going to look like. And, and again, until that's out there, you know, at scale, you don't even know how, how real effective that's going to be. And, you know, we've got to get through the rest of this. And I mean, you know, there's a lot of talk today about like, you know, AMC theaters, Regal theaters, cruise lines, you know, hotels, airlines, um, you know, when are people going to all of a sudden go back at scale in mass once we have a vaccine? How long is that going to take? And can these businesses even make it through to the restaurants? Can you even make it through to that point? You know, if we face another big shutdown where we're at right now, because that's kind of where we're at. So it's really interesting timing for all this. And, and the key is going to be how much of this vaccine, there was a big thing on 60 Minutes last night um, about the vaccine and getting it out to the people and all of the logistics that are uh, involved. I mean, people think it's simple. You just put it in a bottle and ship it. It just doesn't work like that. A lot of huge major logistics and decisions to get enough of, a, of the, these doses out there to really, uh, you know, be able to vaccinate the population. And then again, you know, probably half the people aren't going to want to take it. Yeah. Lots of, lots of great stuff. It, it, I love the fact that you haven't changed anything yesterday, today. I have, uh, at least I'm contemplating change it. So maybe I need to go back and check myself and watch this video again, because you're the professional uh, doing lots more deals. So I, I appreciate that answer. And uh, that's topic number one of the day. Thank you very much, Greg. Yep. Good to be here. Thanks, buddy.